All right, Safraz, it's a pleasure to have you back on the podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Adam. Hi, good evening. How are you today and how is United Kingdom and how is Europe doing? Because I see good news that people can throw their masks and uh, uh, go at small uh, at places where there are less uh, you know, crowd and where you have yeah. less gatherings. I think United Kingdom is allowing that. Yeah, am I right on that? Yeah, well, we've... Um... We've kind of released the uh, restrictions a little bit. Like we're kind of coming out of lockdown. Um, we we can go into restaurants, but we have to be outside. We can go meet people outside. You know, we can meet people in their gardens. You know, limited groups and things like that. So you know, mm-hmm. shops are open and that kind of thing. Uh, gyms are open. Uh, cinemas aren't open and clubs aren't open. We can't eat inside and hotels are closed until seventeenth of May. And then on the 17th of mm. May, people could eat inside and all of that in restaurants. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we're kind of getting okay. there. Um, but it's been difficult, you know. I think, you know, like everyone's been having their own battles and struggles with it. I think, you know, as we talk about mental health a lot, suicides are definitely increased in the UK. You know, mental health is still a big thing. Um, and I know, like, you know, you wanted to mention about, you know, India, because India are kind of going through something pretty, uh, you know, reckless at the moment. Yeah, India, I mean, we were actually shocked uh, with the rise of all, all of a sudden rise of cases because before it was clear that we are off COVID-19, which was wrong. I think uh, we as a big country having a population of 1.3 billion, we need to you know, focus on basic guidelines and the border issues, you know, because it is very important to stop people from traveling because it's we who are the hosts of the disease, right? The virus does not walk, it doesn't walk on the road, right? It is actually in us. And as, uh, you know, being a student of medical science and being a student of, uh, you know, um, biology in my, in my college days, I, I remember uh, virus and the reach of it, you know, how it can actually affect, how it multiplies, how it mutates. Now, India has strains which is very, very dangerous. It's lethal. Now, uh, we took it a little lightly earlier. Now we are gearing up. And what you see in the hospitals is mayhem. And uh, we are trying to cope up with this uh, you know, emergency-like situation where you know, people are dying uh, you know, in a lack of oxygen. But because, because we are a huge population, you understand why there is a, you know, a bigger crisis in India? Because all of a sudden, many people in thousands are getting ill, right? Mm-hmm. If we have people getting in, ill in hundreds, uh, we can still manage. You're getting my point? Yeah. There are thousands of people, at once they want to reach out to the hospital, so even the government cannot do anything. Even the hospital management cannot do anything. Are you trying to get my point? I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. always there is a, like, if you go to a departmental store, right? And if you ask them, give me like 10,000 packet of a Cadbury or a dairy milk or something, even they will not be able to give us, right? So preparation is one thing we have to be uh, taking care of. And the countries like Vietnam and Singapore, I think they have given us uh, one example. They've set an example that, you know, how they are way ahead than many countries in the world. Vietnam, they have focused on every single case because they're very close to China. If you see Vietnam's border, they're just adjacent to China and they were able to control the disease. Now, if somebody tells me that, you know, this disease cannot be controlled. It's false. It can be controlled. Every, everything is controlled by human beings. Remember, everybody remembers God today. But I would like to say one thing. Gods are not managers. They cannot manage human beings, right? So it is us who should be responsible. Now there is a crisis. There was a crisis last year in many other countries. If you remember United States and Brazil and United Kingdom, it was a crisis-like situation. Now... Your population, like I have been to the United Kingdom, so I know villages and towns and, you know, medical attention is very high. So you coped up, right? India, big population. Now, any disease becomes a huge pandemic here, becomes a huge thing in the country because from India, people travel, so it reaches out to other countries. Like people travel from China to India, right? And other countries, so the disease has gone everywhere in the world. Now, if you see IPL has been suspended, the Indian Premier League, the premier cricket tournament in India has been suspended because 
two to three uh, people from the team and the management have been tested positive. Now, can you imagine what if the entire franchise was positive? You know, we are enjoying cricket match on the screen, but on the background, there are cases there. So it's been suspended. So India is now gearing up to actually fight the third wave and manage this crisis today, which has made us learn a lesson that preparation, like countries, Singapore and Vietnam, they make a difference. They make you learn something. They make you understand what and how you can control a pandemic. Because every life is important, Adam. What do you say? Yeah, I agree with you. And I think, um, you know, you, you like you mentioned different countries, how they've handled the pandemic. I mean, uh, you know, we went into a lockdown, you know, beginning of January for four months. So we had like, you know, mm. a full lockdown for four months. And then obviously, you know, that's kind uh, of... Excuse me, I, I'll just interrupt there. Yeah. You were on a lockdown since January. Yeah. I mean, you are on the restrictions since January. So you were able to control the disease in five months' time. It took you four months, 120 days to actually contain the disease, right? Yeah. Because I think I remember having a talk with you in January or December where you told me that after Christmas, it's going to be crazy in the United Kingdom and then mm. you have lockdowns and now, now you are well prepared to go out, right? Restrictions have been lowered. And vaccination is one amazing thing that has been done in the European countries because you focus on the immunity of a, of a human being rather mm -hmm. than anything else. I think vaccination is a one way out. But again, today, because of the pandemic being spread in such a high rate, Adam, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know who should take the vaccine, who should not take the vaccine because some people, they have ailments like diabetes and pressure where vaccines yeah. are, you know, are giving you some sort of symptoms where people are getting very, very you know, uh, worried and they're in a state of panic. Yeah, well, we've been rolling out the vaccine quite massively uh, and, you know, everyone's got their own, I think, opinion on it. Like, we we was rolling out the AstraZeneca one, which is, you know, the Oxford AstraZeneca one and they mm -hmm. were, they've stopped, they've stopped rolling it out to people below 30 because people be, have been having side effects and, um, you know, blood clots. And, you know, that a lot of those cases were in younger people. So they're like, they stopped giving it to younger people because, you know, of these side effects. Plus, um, you know, they've offered other vaccines as well. But like, uh, yeah, we, we contained it for a while. I mean, yeah, cases are still, you know, going up a little bit. I think deaths have definitely gone down. Um, I think I saw today there's been about four deaths. Uh, but you know, it doesn't say what age, but the, the case has definitely gone down massively. You know, I think we've had probably a thousand new cases or something. So that has been a, a big slump, but, you know. There, there is, because, because I think because uh, the government has taken this matter very seriously in the United Kingdom, and I think they, they have taken measures, because see, we can hope for the year to be very good, but we need to prepare. I mean, even to pass an examination, we need to prepare. Right. Mm, this yeah. is a disease reaching every country in the world. I mean, if you go back to history, if you study about the Spanish flu and the influenza of 1918, yeah. it makes you learn a lesson. Now, even that time, I read a placard saying that no mask, you go to jail. So yeah. people were so serious in the 1900s. So why aren't we serious in this century? I mean, we are more educated, we have technology, we are doing video calls, we're doing everything in the world to stay connected, to keep people updated, but we still lack in some sort of norms and guidelines. I think now every country should make certain guidelines that should be followed, you know, like a, like a social security number. There should mm. be some sort of guidelines being followed by every citizen because to end this disease, Adam, it's taking a lot of time. And, uh, you know, Countries like India, Bangladesh, you know, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, we, we work, you know, we work in a different way, right? And we have, you know, people who are very, very emotional. Now, mm. in India, there are so many cases. There are close to around 400,000 cases in a day, right? So that's a lot, right? So close to 4 lakh cases a day, that's 400,000, uh, like you said, in, in the United Kingdom. That's a lot of cases in India. And that is, again, 
Many have been tested negative, but they are positive because you know sometimes even the reports don't show, show you the right thing. Now, yeah. People are going for a computerized sonographic scanning to actually detect the disease. Now, it's very very important. Like we, as you know, like people of this world, not the citizens of any country, we need to join hands together. The mm. whole world should come together because there is one virus. This is causing mayhem. There's not multiple viruses. There is one COVID-19, which mm. the medical science is unable to beat. Mm. Now, this is the point of concern. Now, we talk about scientists, we talk about WHO, but they have to make clear guidelines. How do we end the disease? I don't want any precautions. I don't want any guidelines anymore. Tell us how do we end the disease? Tell us not to practice this. Tell us this. We'll do that for one year and let's let's send this disease away. Mm. There is a way to everything, Adam, but it's us who take things very lightly. Because you must have seen, you know, in, in, in the results of uh, media sources that we, we had a little bit of gatherings in India, because India is a country where festivals yeah. and gatherings and, you know, this is like a compulsory thing. This is how we raise. Now, even yeah. if you stop people, they will still gather, right? Now, yeah, yeah. In a marriage in, in, in the Western countries, you barely have 50 people who comes for a marriage, right? In India, in a basic marriage in a village, more than 500 people come. So it's a social gathering. Festival is a celebration in India. So it's very hard to stop people from actually mm -hmm. gathering. But if there are guidelines in the right way, you know, today, many states in India are completely in a lockdown. And the country is still open. My advice to a lot of people who are in the government or you could say in the administration is, Stop people from traveling from the states and the cities, which is badly hit. Because if they are reaching out to places, they are carrying the disease. Last year, we stopped people from traveling. This year, we are still not stopping people from traveling. So this is my concern. I think if this video reaches out to uh, people, I would just you know, put in my advice or a request to stop people from traveling from bigger cities to smaller cities, because from urban to rural areas, it's going crazy now. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see your points. And I think, uh, you know, that, that is one of the issues. I think that kind of what, there's a lot of controversy over in this country as well. I think uh, people who travel from different towns, I mean, you people are allowed to, but, um, you know, a lot, a, lot, a lot of smaller villages, like you said, in India, you know, going to be intimidated to people coming from, you know, towns or places where there's a lot of cases and, mm -hmm. you know, they're going into other towns and then spreading it. So, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's how it kind of works, isn't it? But like you said, people are going to go out regardless, even if, you know, they're not kind of really meant to, or you're not really meant to do a social gathering. And like in India, you've had like three or four uh, festivals recently. And yeah. You know, I, I saw like you know people all going out, and I mean, I think if you if you social distance, or I don't know if that's even is that is that possible in India? I don't know, but uh, no, know, it is possible in India. We yeah. followed social distancing last year. Yeah, 2020, we had the slogan that we I need to stay two meters apart, and you know you need to wear masks in social distancing. Yeah, I think we should go back to the past. You know, we have to go back to the past how people. Ended diseases in the past. I think this, despite we have technology, despite yeah. we are more educated, we are not following what people followed in the past. Yeah. Are we following? Because we've gone so ahead in life, we think we know everything. But the mm. basics has to be monitored very closely here. Because this disease has a way to travel very fast. It gets communicated very fast. And it affects very fast. I mean, there is a shortage. If there's a shortage of oxygen for a one hour, two hour, you die. Now, yeah. I haven't heard of a disease like that. You still, you know, you still come back to life. Even if you have a heart disease, you still survive for a longer time. But this disease straight away kills you. Mm -hmm. So if we have such a mortality rate in the world right now, what mm -hmm. will be the population? Are we here to accept the history or are we here to change the history? Mm -hmm. We are here to change the history, Adam. We are here to change because we've developed, right? We can't compare ourselves to people from 1918. We have to compare to people coming ahead in our lives. We have to compare to countries which are highly developed. 
Now, mm. Singapore and Vietnam, they're very small countries, I know, but they were able to contain the disease. I think they should lay out the ways how to contain the disease because I think learning from each other is important. If you see Israel again, Israel, Israel has made the country mask free. If you, if you, if you must have read the news, they have vaccinated saw, yeah. the masses. Yeah, they vaccinated the masses. Like in the United States, the United States, the vaccination is at a very high rate. These countries are actually being, a, you know, a role model for a lot of lot of countries. I th I think as well, like they, I think I saw, is it someone in Israel said that they probably have achieved herd immunity or something like that. I saw like mm -hmm. that article, um, but I think like you know with articles as well, like you have to be careful, kind of what's kind of real and what isn't because I, I I've seen articles that kind of contradict some other articles. So I think, you know, with COVID and the news and the media, I think, do you, have you found that you have to be careful kind of what media you look at? Because sometimes it's not, you know, kind of real. And um, Yeah, because because if you see the media from Australia, they I don't know what they talk about. I think even media should be controlled properly because uh, wrong news, they're reaching out to people. Everybody's making news. You don't know what's right and wrong because what, is, yeah. what you see is what you believe, right? What yeah. you see is what you believe. This is what human behavior is all about. This is what a human trait is all about. We both think alike mm. because we are human beings, right? So if you watch a television, if you put on a tele set on your Sky TV and whatever is coming, see, you know, CNN or BBC, you would believe it. Yeah. I believe it. So I think media should give out right information, at least during the pandemic. And uh, there should be ways, you know, that even media yeah. should be controlled in the right way. Because people staying at home, they have only one choice mm -hmm. to watch the television. Now, television is one source which, re which, which helps news to reach out to people, right? Now, if we are unable to pro give proper news to people, it's going to be harmful. So people are in a state of panic in India because there are a lot of wrong news also happening here and there. So like you see and like we see, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, it can be controlled if you want to control. Mm. The want has to be there. Like, like last year, it was the same disease. It was the same virus. This year, what happened? It's a mm. question to us. And we ask question to God. That's why I said gods are not managers. They're not come down everywhere into every human being and save their life. Mm. We have oxygen. We have doctors. We have hospitals. We have medicines. If we take club that together, you save your life. Yeah, I I think um, like with the situation, I mean, it's like you said, you kind of have to kind of control, you know, and just do your best to take precautions. I think you know as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that in the UK, that I don't know if you saw this, but they've uh, they did the government have done a like a controlled experiment where because we're opening up like nightlife centres and stuff uh, pretty soon, they are. They did an experiment where they had the lots of people tested negatively for COVID, and then they put them in a in a nightclub setting in a festival in this warehouse. Okay. And they okay. tested everybody, and then there was all negative. So they're they're seeing if you know large gatherings of people, if that works, because that's what the future will be for, you know, traveling or going um, into nightclubs or places. You'll have to have a, a test. And if you're negative, then you can go. If you're not, then... So, but why you have those gatherings? I mean, is it compulsory to gather? Can't we stay, like, away from gathering for a year or two? Is it like a compulsion? I, I think, mean, you go know, for a COVID yeah. test to party. If you tell me that sufferers can come to a party, you go for a COVID test. I'll say, no, Adam, I won't go. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because there is a possibility of me getting the disease. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's a good effort. It's a good effort that you're trying to put people in a pool. It's like a gene pool, right? Mm. You put people, you know, club them together. All are negative, right? And you want to see what the result would be. I mean, that's a very mm. scientific approach. That's a very nice approach and a practical approach. But I think even that's harmful. I think people would test positive because IPL was actually going with the technique of air bubble. You know what an air bubble is, right? Bio hmm. bubble, sorry, bio bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when there's a when there's a bio bubble, right? So, but still the players tested positive. 
Now, if mm. players are testing positive, right, it reaches out to the coaches, commentators, even to the people who are in the field, and there it goes even bigger. So, mm. a big tournament like Indian Premier League has, has been cancelled, been postponed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, I think like, you know, these experiments where, you know, we could do a mass testing of people and then put them in a, a big group and see what the outcome is. I mean, are they, I mean, the, the tests aren't always, you know, accurate hundred percent. You know, sometimes people do a test and they get a negative, they take it again, they get a positive, you know, po- or it might get a positive and then they take it again and they get a negative. So, I mean, there might be a small percentage of people who get it and that, you know, but it's still there, isn't it? It's still um, there. But I think like, people just need to, I think, take precautions. And like you said, the whole solution is how, how, where's the end to it? Is it, is it something that is just going to be around forever? And we just kind of, uh, take precautions, wear masks and social distancing. Um, I mean, there, there, I saw an article, I don't know if you saw it at the BBC, where they're trying to say we might take away social distancing and I think masks, uh, completely soon. You know, we'll be able to, take away social distancing soon. I mean, there's been articles about that in the UK. Uh, That's why UK is moving ahead. And what about the third wave? What's the news about the third wave in the UK? Because India is talking about third wave in India. We all talking about third wave. Hmm. I think, I mean, I think you just have to wait and see, but I think there's definitely going to be other strains of it. Uh, I, I think over time, you know, I like to think it will just kind of die out. Do you know what I mean? That's like me being optimistic. Perhaps we either all get it and then we've kind of fight off that way or, you know, it just, it's a tricky one. I'm not, you know, like a scientist, but like it's, I think it'll either go one way or the other. Yeah. It'll, it'll go one yeah way. No, no, no. You should think like a scientist because every individual today, they're thinking like a scientist. Mm. Right? How, what, when, why? Yeah. This is what, these are the four words I always go with in, whenever I go for any event or whenever I talk. How, what, when, why? These are the four things. If we focus on these four things and we answer these questions, we're done. Mm. We, we, yeah. we actually end this disease as soon as possible. I think we have to make sure that people are well aware. And I think there should be more advertisements, you know? Because there are a lot of people, you know, unless they're forced to listen to something, they don't listen, right? Mm. So I think there should be a lot of advertisements in the telesets, in the radio, in the BBC about social distancing, about washing your hands, hygiene, because in the past I see that countries have always put hygiene in the first place. We forgot on hygiene, actually. We've been focusing on social distancing and wearing a mask, but nobody talks about hygiene these days. Mm. I don't know why. I think the first priority should be hygiene. As you enter yeah. your house, you wash your hands. As you get out of your house, you wash your hands and use a sanitizer and then wear a mask and then do social distancing. Mm-hmm. Because first it starts with you. First it starts with hygiene. Yeah? Because there are a lot of things, there are a lot of things that we're not talking about these days. People have forgotten hygiene. I mean, hand yeah. washing is the most important tool to fight COVID. I think I'll talk about mm-hmm. Just mention two important points. The most important tool to fight COVID-19 or any viral diseases is hygiene, mm. right? And the first medicine for COVID-19 in the world is not any, any, any medicine that you take from a pharmacy is actually oxygen. So mm. oxygen is not a necessity. It's a medicine today. If people, is, if people are dying, just give them oxygen, they are alive, right? So mm. that's the first mm. medicine. This is what doctors and scientists are talking about. So if you provide anybody who is uh, suffering from COVID-19, if you give them basic oxygen, they mm. will survive. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think like, you know, hygiene, uh, you know, your health, you know, it all, in, all kind of interlinks, you know, your diet, uh, you know, your lifestyle. Like, you know, like I say, oh, hygiene, I've got like, you know, hand sanitizer in my car. You know, when I go Which to one is like... That? Which one is that? Uh, it just says high hygienics hygienics it was 99.9 percent yeah. but okay but I, you know i use that when i go into you know when i fill up my car for petrol uh, you know after i touch things i think it's important mm-hmm. but i think a lot of the time you know you see people a lot of the people who are probably dying or getting really ill 
might have, you know, pre-existing health conditions that might not look after themselves. I mean, I saw that, you know, young young people are being affected by, you know, the virus in India, but mm-hmm. you don't, I think the media doesn't say whether that person's got something wrong with them. You don't, you know what I mean? That what is their diet? You know, we talk about vit- vitamin C, you know, vitamin D. No, sorry, vitamin D is a big uh, thing I've heard a lot about, you know, fighting COVID. Yes. We are talking about zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D, right? These are all vitamins that we need. I just made a video today on the importance of zinc, uh, which I'll be uploading later on so that you can watch it too. Today, we are talking about basic ingredients that is already available in the food that we eat. Mm. So vitamin C equals to oranges and lemon. Yeah, yeah. Right? Zinc equals to a lot of guava, a lot of pomegranate, a lot of kiwi. Yeah, so these are all things we should actually try. You eat a lot of meat, you're well and good. You get a lot of zinc through meat. So Mm. this is all to boost up your immune system. This is not to make you recover. This is to actually boost your immune system because actually the immune system is fighting the disease, not the medicine. Mm. Yeah, we forget. Yeah, yeah. That the medicine is fighting. No, the body is fighting. We're just making the body stronger. So right now we have to make sure that we, we make a tweak in the diet that we take. A high protein diet today is very helpful, Adam. And I think uh, even you should keep yourself hydrated with a lot of lemon juice and orange juices because that is the only booster for our immune mm. system. Our immune system is already very strong. It's already fighting a lot of viral diseases outside. Cold, cough, inlo- influenza, fever, diarrhea mm. these are already there now we welcome covid19 it's trying to be the king of all virus you know mm. it's trying to be mm. the leader everybody wants to be a leader right so this is a virus leader this is a virus leader which is trying to lead the entire gangs of viruses now mm. fighting this covid19 has been difficult by every country and i know even you've seen so many people getting affected and you meet people and you, they're so sad and depressed I think today, instead of being a crybaby, I think now we should prepare. Mm. Because we are alive, we should be thankful to God that we are alive. We've not, you know, got the disease of not uh, met, we did not meet people who, who have this ailment. Mm, mm, mm. But we can actually prepare us for tomorrow. Mm. Let's not make 2022 another wave of COVID-19. I think human beings are strong enough to beat any virus. It's time. Lesson one, 2020. Lesson two, 2021. Now it's up to us if we scrap that lesson three from our books of COVID-19. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, I think that's a really, really great point. And I think, you know, like learning from prior mistakes and, you know, moving forward, you know, in a better way, you know, makes you more efficient and, you know, it's better for everyone else because it's, it's a team yeah, effort. Absolutely. That makes sense. Yes, team effort, doctors, scientists, all the educated crowd should gather together, make policies for the nation, for the country, for the state, for small villages and towns, every administration. It depends from town to town and like in the UK, county to county, right? Mm. So we have to prepare ourselves like that. It cannot be one massive decision for the whole country. It has to be broken down into small little points or specific zones. Like you talk Mm. about containment zones, right? It's just that we took it a little lightly, Adam. I think after January, February, we took it a little lightly. We shouldn't take anything lightly today, Mm. especially when it comes to a disease. Yeah, I think this is the thing. I mean, like, you know, like the government... I think we we came out of a lockdown for a couple of months. You know, we had Christmas. I think that's like you know when we last spoke yeah, you about told it. Me. We talked around the Christmas time, and you told me that things are not like before. Yeah, and yeah, you know, I could see it coming, and I was like, you know, people are going to go and mix and do whatever they got to do, and then there's going to be a massive increase of cases, which there was, and then you know, so you know, look at it like you know, have a lockdown for couple of months or, or however long and that'll you know decrease the cases um try and you know trying to contain it as you said um and people you know i think the tr- the hard thing is with people is that you know we're social creatures and 
people like social contact and all of that, you know. If, that is um, compulsory. I mean, like when you meet yeah. a friend, you need to shake hands. Yeah. It is the society which taught us to shake hands, not the books. Mm. And now it's the disease teaching us not to shake. Yeah. No, I see. And I, I think, you know, I think the fundamental part of it is, you know, people taking precautions. Um, you know, for my for my new job, I've got to take a COVID test, like, you know, a few times a week. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's... A few times a week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... So that's me you know, taking precautions and making sure things are okay. Do you know what I mean? And whereas I think you have to kind of have those kind of boundaries in place where, you know, you either get vaccinated or you take a test or, or both or whatever, you know, um, and don't go meet loads of different people and just be careful who you meet. I think that's, that's like one of the, you know, the, the, the things with it, you know, like think about, like use your common sense as we talk about, you know, think about who you're meeting, where you're going. Mm -hmm. uh, who have they been around? It's important. They do? it's important. It's important. If you want to live longer, you need to decide whom you want to meet. Yeah? And uh, I think uh, staying home is good. Eating right is good. And being positive, like we do our regular podcast on mental yeah. illness to talk about people's health. And today we are discussing this uh, COVID in length because what we left last time mm. Maybe very few people get that opportunity to continue that. We left yeah. it in the pandemic and then we join again with our podcast in a relapse of a pandemic of, because of ill preparation, because of not being aware of what's happening at many other countries in the world and also not focusing on the basics. Now, it's, it's very easy to criticize the government. Now, it's very easy to criticize. People very easily criticize, but even government is a body, right? Even they are not... Uh, aware of a lot of things, right? Yeah. So we as the people, we as the citizens of every country should wake up, should rise, and we should start these basic, you know, follow these basic norms and guidelines in our houses first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in our society first. And we need to start preaching people that wear a mask and, you know, follow distancing and also use sanitizers and the uh, you know, the guidelines laid down by WHO because, you know, it's getting crazy. I mean, people are losing lives like anything. I mean, we're not fruits and vegetables, right? Mm. We're not fruits and vegetables, right? We're not like, you just throw it and you just kill anybody, right? We're not mm. animals. Today, mm. people are dying like animals. Like, you know, it's like, uh, we can't do anything about it. Yeah. So if we cannot do anything about it, that means whatever technology, whatever growth, whatever de development we've had all these years, where is it gone? Yeah, I, I think like you said, it's not just the uh, medical, physical side of the virus that attacks people. I think you know it's the mental health side of it as well, isn't there? Which you know we talk about, and you know I know, you know I know I know a friend who told me you know he knows three people who aren't even thirty years old who've committed suicide, you know because. Their, their mental health by the pandemic, by the lockdowns and situation, you know, is causing people anxiety and depression. And, and that's just a number of cases, you know, but like widespread, like there are, there are people who are being affected now, even though things are opening up now, people are, have been impacted mentally by the mm -hmm. lockdowns, by, by the whole situation. Um, uh, losing jobs, losing jobs. I mean, the that as well, yeah. biggest way to be mentally ill is losing your source of income. And people have lost jobs like anything. This is not 2008 recession anymore. This is 2020, 21 mega recession. Well, people are losing jobs, businesses, you know, lives, you know, families, friends, relatives. It's no more restricted to just a job. And there are a lot of people who are losing their jobs because I think work is life and life is work. It's balanced yeah. that way. Mm. Yeah? If you have yeah, work, yeah. your life is better. If you don't have work, life is not better. Right? Mm. Life is good when your work is good. This is how it is. This is how it should be. Today, work is heavily damaged. Like you said, a couple of times in a week, you have to do a COVID test. After a few months down the line, you get irritated out of it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's um it's a situation, isn't it, where you know people 
it being, you know, being impacted in different ways. And like, you know, with the job side, I saw an article today and I think it was with the BBC. No, it was on LinkedIn. I think it was with the BBC. And it said mm-hmm. that people who are in professional jobs in the UK are a higher percentage of them are considering applying for jobs below their skill set and their, their actual pay grade because they're unsure if they're going to lose their job in, the, in that mm-hmm. industry they're in, if that makes sense. So they're, they're, they're going towards different areas that they're not even kind of, um, they're kind of overqualified, if that makes sense, because they're unsure about what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, so it's this is what's happening. I mean, like people are scaling themselves downwards now to get a job, mm. which is not right. I mean, what your skills are, you deserve to get the right job. And uh, if this is the situation, people will get m- mentally ill and uh, there will be more problems in the coming years then because job is related to everything. You, you know how it feels, right? When we yeah, look yeah. for a job, how tense we are because we, we plan everything as for our job and salaries and our, you know, what our pay is like, right? Mm-hmm. So I think today government has to be ready with these kind of problems when it come in the future because... It's not like we are losing jobs today. It's going to be an array of jobs that's going to be lost in the couple of months and years to come. Because, mm-hmm. you know, everybody can't face that pandemic. Everybody, any company would not survive cost, you know, cost cutting every time. They will make the company dormant or they'll shut down the businesses. Now, this will affect the manpower. Yeah. And the manpower is mentally ill already because of the pandemic outside. Now, pandemic and losing a job is a double, you know, what do you call it? Yeah. yeah. Twice being hit is bad. Now, that's yeah. why you said suicide. Why would somebody do a suicide because of the pandemic? I think there are, I think there are more additional factors. To it. They might mm. be you know, wanting to go out. They might be wanting to people. Now, no's, a lot of no's can make you mentally ill. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the things I think we should talk about and people should be aware of because a lot of people are doing life coaching now online and people should get into it. I think it's a very good line of, uh, you know, uh, it's a very good way of fighting this disease as well. Yeah. You have to make yourself mentally strong so that you're physically not weak yeah. and follow the right diet. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I think it all interlinks, doesn't it? I think, you know, the well-being of yourself and, you know, helping other people because, you know, by helping other people, they're, they're then going to help themselves. And then it kind mm-hmm. of, like, spreads like that. Um, yes. But, no, I, I definitely agree. And I think it's, you know, it's, been, it's been important talking about it because it's something that, you know, we both, you know, everyone's experiencing certain parts of it. You know, your, my country's been through a lot with it. You know, yours is going through a lot. Um, you know, it's important to kind of raise that awareness, you know, to talk about it because... Uh, you know, a lot of people were in a similar situation, you know? Absolutely. And uh, it's time that uh, we should be very, very careful of where we go. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's not make this a chapter. Like you have this first wave and this have this second wave and have this third mm-hmm. wave. I think we have this amazing thing called the human brain. Mm-hmm. And you have this amazing thing called, you know, our mind and our senses to focus on things and work hard. We've worked mm-hmm. hard on many things like the GDP, the economy, you know, like we do everything like in every sport or in mm-hmm. basic studies. I think now we should just gear up and fight this disease in the right way. There has to be strict guidelines and people have to follow it because a lot of people are dying. And I do not want to see, I mean, I, I do not want to see my, my world. You know, like we, we've been taught that yeah. we are in the world, we are in the universe. I don't want mankind to vanish because yeah. people are dying just like animals i want people to come out of this disease and this pandemic and the only way out today is to pass on this strong message but hold on things will be all right and uh, you know even god is watching right even he can't do anything he doesn't have a magic stick like we have this pen and we think that we have a magic stick and we put it this way <laughs> and then the, yeah. then the pandemic goes it's not like that anymore because it's we human beings who complicated the whole thing right we make big hospitals, we make big medicines, we make everything. And at, at last, we ask God to come and sort this problem out. This is not fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is not fair. Now, if we put in a mess, we need to 
sort that mess too. Now, pandemic yeah. was there restricted to China. Lunar year, lunar calendar year, like we discussed in our earlier podcast, 31st of December, people flew all over the world. Now the disease is there sitting in every country. We are just sitting and talking about do this, do that. Now it's time we talk about how to end this disease right away. What do you do when somebody commits a crime? You hang them, right? Or you sentence them or put them to prison. So it's like that now. Today, we have to take strict actions, people who are not following the guidelines. Because we only learn when strict actions are taken, Adam. We don't learn when light actions are taken. Do you agree with me? Yeah, I agree. I think when, when penalties are enforced that are really strict, you know, there's going to be consequences. I think, yeah, you know, you, uh, you listen, you know, like I know Australia have said, if anyone goes to India and they come back, they can either go to jail or get fined. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, penalties, I've got, I've got why friends. Why are we not talking about penalties? Why are we not talking about penalties? Why are we not fining people? You know, mm-hmm. it's time, right? I think, I think people will, I mean, a certain percentage of people didn't listen in the UK when we was in lockdown. People, I know people who, um, that you know, did parties and they got fined. People. Oh, they did. They did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, but like you know, it's always going to be that percentage of people who push the boundaries. I mean, we we closed all the pubs, um, in the you know bars, and people still opened up the business and got fined. I think a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds. Um, it's not worth it, but. You know, the majority of people listen. The majority of people do listen. Um, you get people who don't think and they don't care, but you're going to get that, I think, anyway. Uh, but ultimately, I think if, if there are consequences that are put in place, you know, and, and fines, then it's going to stop, deter people, you know, a large amount of people from doing stuff. Um, we can't, as I said before, go abroad anywhere unless it's, like we have to fill in like a certain form say this mm-hmm. is vital I need to go to a different country or whatever otherwise you know right now it's illegal and we're waiting to see what countries we can go to through a traffic light system which they're like in the process of uh, setting up so you know I think like you said you need to have consequences in place precautions and a, you know a form of control in some way to to stop it haven't you because otherwise it will just keep going one on. more thing Adam there should be this should yeah. be random testing yeah. Random testing is, I think, one of the best ways out here. Yeah. Yeah? Because you don't know who is positive and you don't know who is negative. Mm. You can't even put a tag because any negative could be positive, any positive could be negative. So there could yeah. be random testing. I mean, like, if you're opening up, there could be random testing. This would help. This would actually help mm. you to understand the disease more better, I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they... I know the UK did like, you know, a lot of mass testing, you know, I know mm-hmm. the, the swabs, like, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, yeah. months back, months the back, swab test. You had, yeah, months back, you had to uh, go somewhere to get it done. And then you had to wait like a week or something or two weeks to get your results or whatever it was. Now you've got, I, I can go to the local chemist, pick up a swab for free, test myself and I get it in 25 minutes. So do you get that there? Yeah, that's what we have. We can go to the local chemist and get a swab and we, we do it and you it, it and how do you test about, it? How do you test it? How do you test it? I have I haven't done one yet, but you know you, when I do it, you have to put it up your nose and then it down your throat, and then you put it in some liquid, I think, and then you mix this liquid with something else with the swab, and it gives you a result in uh, like less than half an hour. They're like lateral, nice. called lateral, lateral flow tests. Um, but, okay, that's nice. Um, but but we've got a funny, you know, a bit of a bad situation where people are coming to the UK and they're having to pay private firms for those tests, and people are paying, you know, two hundred pounds or if not more to get hold of certain tests. So I mean, that's that's another conversation. But you know, you, you can see the the, the leaps and the advances in in some aspect, you know, uh, with the tests. I mean, is that, is that a thing in India? Can you get those in India? Is that? 
Well, we have tests done at hospitals. That's the reason the yeah. process is slow. Because yeah. we, trust, we trust the medical body more, right? But this yeah. idea of yours is very nice. I think this, if we, if we come out with this idea, like the UK is doing, of getting this lab test available uh, you know, at the medical stores, I think that would be very easy. It's a very easy way to actually track more people who are infected. Yeah. Like you said, we, you were queued last time. Even we are yeah. having queues because there's a lot of, as I told you, as we began the podcast today, let's talk about a 1.3 billion population and let's talk mm. about one virus damage again. You understand? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about 1.3 billion against one damn virus. So it's crazy. There's no mathematics involved here, right? Mm. 1.3 billion, you understand? Just imagine the multiplication rate, the mu mutation rate, everything. So it, as fast as we get into the testing part, and as fast as we get into strict rules and regulations and guidelines, only that's the way we can contain the disease. Otherwise, we're awaiting the third wave. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, um, you know, these to be those, those um, guidelines and things that people adhere to. Because, I mean, surely this situation that India are going through kind of should be a wake-up call in some sense. I mean, if... Yeah, it's a big-time wake-up call wherein uh, we as citizens, again, let's not blame anybody. I think the blame game is over now. We as citizens should be geared up with basic facilities at home, good diet, taking care of oneself, and taking care of your loved ones and taking care of your relatives. It's time not to leave them when they are COVID positive. It's time to be with them and take care of them because our immunity is stronger than the person who is actually dealing with it. Now, this entire idea of self-isolation is great. It's great. But people are dying in self-isolation, right? So there has to be a, somebody who can, you know, like a caregiver. Somebody should take care of that man to recover. You know, this isolation process, you know, it's like, it's also some sort of mental illness. Imagine ourselves being locked in a room for 14 to 15 days. I mean, I'll go crazy. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I think that's like another good point, you know, with... Uh... This is nice. This is nice, Adam. I will interrupt here. You will hear the siren now. That's patrolling. Do you hear that? Yeah. What's, what's that for? That's patrolling to make sure people are inside their houses. Really? Yeah. So even that's happening in India. So people are making... The administration is making effort. But it is we, we have to listen to that, right? Yeah. They are making this effort. Now, when people hear this, this patrolling sound around, they go inside their houses. Are people... So when, they go, when they go away, they come out again. So this is how it works. <laughs> 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 so, so, so when that happens, are like officers going through the streets as that happens, or is that just like a random... Yeah, alarm? yeah, yeah. They, they come out, they announce... They tell us that, you know, you should follow social distancing. This is the effort by the administration. You know, the local administration does that. And it's a good effort. You know, people, unless you push people, they're not going to do it. Some people say, you know, there's a man I met, okay? He told me confidently, I won't get COVID. He said, now, how, okay. can you have that kind of, how can you have that kind of confidence when people are dying? <laughs> I mean, I want to make this, uh, you know, podcast a little, uh, you know, uh, yeah. merrier in the end so that people yeah. do smile after listening to such serious conversations. Now, there are yeah. such people in India who think that, you know, they don't get corona. They won't get COVID-19. I mean, like, yeah. I'm completely shocked when I talk to them, you know? They're like, yeah. uh, I won't get COVID. And it's been two years, they haven't got COVID. So can you imagine the self belief <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. You know, you have all kind of people. I mean, you have yeah. blend. It's a blend, you know. It's a mix of complete different people in this country. So, you know, when you when things are there, you put guidelines in countries like UK and US, it's easy. Yeah. You put guidelines in countries like India, when there is a lot of lot of people on the roads, it's hard. It's hard. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 difficult, you know, trying to manage that amount of people, isn't it? So I think, like in mm -hmm. in in some places. You know, they're like, um, you know, they're just like, well, let's just go with it. And I, I know, like, certain places in America, you know, so I won't get too much into it, but certain states are pretty much like, you know, let's just open everything up and just uh, see how it goes. Um, yes. And, and I, which, 
kind of make you know it depends on how many people you have but like with that guy saying he's not going to get covid like i in my mind i i haven't thought that i said to myself like if i do get it i'm able to fight it because i'm gonna look after myself I'm not, yes that's the right attitude that's the right yeah. that's the right attitude yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But it's like it's like yeah. saying I'm gonna walk into this room holding a match, trying to find a gas leak. I'm not going to blow up. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's uh, it's a bit true. crazy having, yeah, it's crazy having that kind of mentality. Yeah, it's crazy. See, it's it's all about see, it's all about how people take this. Disease, right. First yeah. of all, they have to be made aware that this is not an easy disease. I mean, why are you know the doctors and scientists? actually having a tough time finding ways out of this disease because it's crazy right because it's crazy otherwise if it was just like a cold or flu we would have taken some medicine right some paracetamol and some sort of medicine and be fine mm. i mean people are raising questions on the vaccines too right yeah they're, yeah. they're raising questions on the process of vaccination they're raising questions why is there you know a division in the age everybody should everybody should be open for vaccination it doesn't mean that the elderly will die tomorrow and the young people will die day after tomorrow. It's nothing as such. I don't know where the age calculation comes out to be because I think everybody needs immunity. Yeah. And everybody needs life. Yeah. If you agree to what I'm saying, everybody needs vaccination. And it should be vaccination for all. And I, everybody should go and take up the vaccination, you know, take the go for the vaccination process because it's important. I think. I think with the vaccine, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of different media links and I've seen a lot of articles contradict themselves. And I've, I, I have contacts who, you know, used to work for certain companies. And like right now, like a vaccine, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm against vac vaccines, but I'm just saying like, you have to kind of take precautions in some sense because the confidence with the young people in this country is being quite damaged because they they've panicked in the UK, particularly with with the vaccine that's rolling out, because quite a few young people are having blood clots and dying. And that's so, the Astra. That's the Astra vaccine, right? Astra, we are with the AstraZeneca, but AstraZeneca, I, me, per, yeah. me, me personally, I have seen articles which have said that it's with pretty much most of the vaccines have had side effects. But if you think about yes, it, yes, yes, true. That's it's, very it's, true. It's, 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 it's a new true. vaccine, isn't it? These are new vaccines, so they're going to be side effects for whatever reason. Of With course, and it's made in a hurry. Yeah. It's made in a yeah. hurry. So everything that's made in a hurry would have side effects. Yeah. So yeah. So it takes time. I think from the months to come, I think we'll have the vaccine, which is more effective. Yeah. I think yeah. we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have uh, vaccines which can give you the, you know, the, the efficacy rate of the vaccine yeah. will be like close to 99%. And I think that time... Everybody will be comfortable to take vaccines. Yeah. I mean, this percentage thing, this percentage thing is a question mark for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, there's, I think, you know, I think it's going to, I think it will take time to see the effects of it because I mean, our government, what I've seen, has said we've got a low amount of cases thanks to the vaccine. And then they said, Hang, a, hang on a sec, it was actually because of the lockdowns and they said it's not the vaccines. And then, do you know what I mean? So they kind of said different things. And I'm like, because mm -hmm. it's the trust of the people, isn't it? You know, the government needs to gain the trust of the people and things like that. So, but I think everyone everyone has their own opinion on, on do you know what I mean? If they want to have a vaccine or if they don't or if whatever. It's Yes, absolutely. It's a strange Correct. situation. Mm -hmm. but but no i i think you know it's been important to talk about and you know i, I just i i just kind of round up you know wish you you know continued health and success and you know all that you're doing with you yourself and your family because you know I, we're good friends and you know i just think in the situation that you look at you know look after yourself as you do in your family and, uh, i think it's important yes Yes, I think everybody should take care of themselves right now and we should not be overconfident of not getting this disease. Contracting yeah. this disease is very, very easy because you touch, because you have human contact, because you speak to people and it's everywhere. So I think everybody should be careful. 
I think we should uh, call this uh, podcast off by giving a positive note that mm. everybody should be strong. And the only way to fight this disease is stay home and make your community strong. Instead of going mm. outside, be ready for a bigger pandemic if it comes in the future by making your community strong. This is a mm. lesson today that we should work on ourselves, on our human body, which is already very complicated and it's asking for more immunity, right? Mm. We need more immunity today because of ourselves. Now, we have to change the entire diet plan. One should do it. People should listen and read positive things so that mentally you are fit. Mm. Physically, immune, immune, you're fit. And if you are yeah. mentally fit, you can fight any pandemic. COVID-19 is just any other disease which has turned mm. big because of human mistakes. And it is we humans who has to take care of it, not God. So it's all of us joining hands together and fight this disease like we are fighting a war. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. No, I agree. I just want to give up this positive message. Everybody should stay strong. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not time yet to leave this world. It's time to rock this world. So let's prepare mm. and gear up. Yeah. No, definitely. No, I think that's a really great point. And I think that's, that's well said. I think, you know, people need to, you know, really look after themselves and, you know, it's a joint effort, isn't it? Yes, yes. So I, I loved this episode today, Adam. I love yeah, this episode same. today. We are, we've uh, been covering a lot of issues and I think we'll continue because I want yeah. to give you an update from India and I think you should give yeah, me an yeah, yeah. from the UK. I think this is how yeah, it's yeah. going to make our podcasting more interesting. Let's connect yeah. more often and let's rock it. Yeah, yeah. No, it sounds good to me. Yeah, and you take care of yourself, Adam. Take care of yourself. No, thank you. No, definitely. I definitely yeah. will. Okay. And stay connected. I'll taking, yeah. I'll be taking the, uh, the lemon lemon juice and uh, ginger and kiwi and all that. Are you already taking it? I'll, I'll get some more of it. you get some more of it. This yeah. is what happens in the United Kingdom, you know, like if you, if you, if somebody tells you something, you, you take it often, right? This is what I've seen. Yeah. There. yeah. yeah. You, you get addicted to it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I hope there's no. I hope there is no alcohol coming up uh, with uh, you know citric acid and vitamin C and vitamin D because they'll have a high sale. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll go through the roof. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Oh. Anyways, uh, Adam, thank yeah. you so much for your time. Bye. Have a good You're day welcome. ahead, and thank you so much. Yeah, cheers. You're welcome. You too.